All right, I think, I guess we could get started. 7.05, not bad, right? Uh, at least we're not long time, we're not two hours behind. So we're good? <laughs> I think there's still a few people that will be uh, coming through, but that's okay, as they come through, uh, they'll, they'll come by. Okay, who's, who's here been uh, to our uh, seminars before? Raise your hand. All right, that's good. Who hasn't been to our seminars? Okay, about half, half. That's pretty good. Usually we got new people, so I guess everybody, all the people that used to come, they're very interested in this topic. That's why they came back. <laughs> so that's good. Uh, all right, if you guys don't know, I'll do a brief introduction, uh, and then uh, we'll get started, okay? Uh, anyways, welcome. Uh, this is our Mom Wealth Builders series. So Mom Wealth Builders. Um, my wife and I, uh, right here, uh, my wife and I created this platform uh, to pump it the moment. Uh, and so uh, that's what we've done this year uh, since January. We host a series of different workshops. Uh, this year in particular, it's about real estate. So we go through like different topics and, and, and things like that. Uh, and I'm so happy that you guys are here. All right? On a Tuesday evening. So with the first day, I, I want all you guys to stand. Please stand for me. It's Tuesday evening. So. Stan, I want you guys to say hi to someone you don't know. So at least two people uh, before. Uh, okay. Introduce yourself. I know we have a lot of minds here, but you gotta say your last name. All right, you guys know these two people now? Okay, those will be your, your singing buddies and drinking buddies later, okay? We're gonna sing, this is a karaoke place, all right? Okay, everybody can sit that down. This is a karaoke place, we have this place all night. Thank you to the food and come to Cheers here. Um, they've been, uh, they allowed us to use this space for free to, to help our community, all right? Uh, and so, uh, thank you to come to Cheers. But after Big Dama, we're done at nine. After that's done, uh, we'll, I mean, we buy all you guys a free drink. So after that, you guys got the blue ticket? Yeah. Okay, that blue ticket is your drink. So who, who doesn't have a blue ticket? Who, this blue ticket? All right, uh, Nadine, can you get it? Who, who doesn't have a blue ticket? Raise your hand. Okay, my wife will come around and give you guys a blue ticket. That's your free drink, so you just go to the bar, Tabe uh, Tana, and go get your free drink. Okay, so uh, today's topic is uh, how to make $100,000, right? On a new construction deal. So I'll have Hong Kong uh, come and talk about that in a little bit, but I'll do some introduction first. So John, uh, the first thing is I want John to be the sponsor. Uh, they're not, none of them here today. <laughs> But uh, we have a lot of different sponsors that sponsor our events. Not just the events, but like our platform in general. Because it's just, uh, uh, we have to build the events of Tana, we want to continue to build a platform, uh, a Mount Will Builders platform. Go be and share information with each other in our Mount community in terms of entrepreneurship and investing. Right, and this year we're very focused on business and real estate, but we want to bring other things into that too, whether it's marketing, uh, or you know, uh, or you know, do restaurants or uh, stock investing. Uh, we hope to bring more of that in the future. But at least right now, this year we're focusing on businesses and real estate investing. Okay. So thank you to our sponsor, uh, Title Smart. If you guys do any real estate, you need a title company. So uh, go with them, uh, Title Smart. But Bo Vang and Title Smart, she's really good, very knowledgeable. Bo Bang Kai, you don't like to close your house. If you, uh, if you guys didn't know that. And then uh, my good friend Patrick Nguyen, he owns Adelaide Electric Company. Uh, they do, he does pretty much all my electrical uh, work for me. Uh, they have a big team that could do commercial, residential, everything like that. So if you guys need help with electrical stuff, uh, contact them as well, all right? Okay, so who am I? Uh, I don't know if all you guys know me, so I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Tu Feng. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, 
And so me and my wife, uh, my wife's there, and I live in this town. So that's, that's my wife there. Uh, so my wife and I, we've been investing in real estate since 2017. Uh, we moved from San Diego, or well, in Shijo, and then we moved from San Diego over here. Uh, and then we started investing in real estate since we moved here in 2000. At the end of 2016, and then we started investing in 2017. Uh, I'm also a real estate agent. So I'm an agent at Creator Results. And no, you don't have to be a real estate agent to be a real estate investor. I'm just that because of the circumstances. But you don't have to be a real estate agent if you want to be an investor. Will it help us? You know, there's discussions about that. Um, yeah, so this year my wife and I, we created the Mount Well Builders platform. Uh, when I say my wife and I, I also met our team. We had different people under us that you know help us with uh, organizations and everything like that. Right now they're volunteering their time only. Uh, we hope that in the future we can start paying some staff. Um, but you could go to mountwellbuilders.com if you want to find out information about us. Uh, what else do I do? I do uh, sort of every, uh, every, once a month, I try to do a, a discussion. So interview uh, on Facebook, YouTube, uh, to discuss uh, with other entrepreneurs and investors. And so I do our Mount Well Builders show, that's usually on Thursday evenings, on 7 to 8.30. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen some of those shows, but uh, Hong Kong's been one of them. In the, in the past, I didn't call it that yet. <laughs> and then I also co-host uh, a Mount Radio show. Uh, we talk about real estate as well. As you know, I'm a real estate guy, so just talk everything about real estate. Uh, and so that one is geared towards Big Dog and Lao Zhang because it's on a radio platform. And so my, me and my good friend and mentor, uh, Pesin, that owns a long radio broadcast uh, uh, a station, uh, him and I, we, we do real estate show every Saturday to discuss about real estate, share the information to Big Dog community. Yeah. All right. So can I speak English or do I need, uh, everyone understood English? Right, we're good? Okay, right, I'm going I'm to speak Mongolish all night, so if you don't understand me, uh, just raise your hand and stop me. In between here, if you guys have any questions, raise your hand and stop me too, okay? Cool? All right. All right, today's agenda. I'm going to talk briefly about one of our big events that we're putting. Again, uh, the Mongol Builders platform is a platform to provide resource for us, but part of the platform is that we're going to be having a conference. So. I'll talk a little bit about that. Our trainer today is Hong Kong Bank, uh, very knowledgeable. Uh, I had a, when I moved up here, I was fortunate enough to attend one of his sessions like this. He was talking um, a different topic at that time. Um, but because I met him and uh, a lot of other people, uh, a lot of different mentors and peers that I've met throughout my process that really helped me and my wife get to where we're at. So I'm very fortunate that he's, he's, he agreed to come out and share this information with us. Uh, we're going to, the topic today is how to make $100,000 of profit per new construction development, right? So building, some, building a property on the ground, from the ground up. Then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about the Mount Will Builders Conference again, if you guys want to register. Uh, we'll do some networking, we'll get you a free beer, we're going to karaoke all night here until they close. I think they close at 12 today. So we could stay here until 12 if you guys want to, all right? I know we have some uh, singers back there, so you're going, you're going to start. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Mount World Builders Conference. Anyone heard about our conference before, before tonight? Hassan, raise your hand higher. Okay, who hasn't heard about our conference? Wait, the rest of you guys <laughs> didn't raise your hand. <laughs> I'll send to you guys. This means we need to do a better job to share what our conference is. And I'm glad you guys came today because we're going to share about that. All right, aside from the training. Um, this year's conference, we're, again, we're focused on business and real estate opportunities. It'll be August 24th, 25th. Yes, that's Thursday and Fridays. It's going to be two days and two nights. Yes, we're doing the evening as well. Uh, because we're going to network with the speakers, trainers, and everybody else also. All right, it's going to be at the YMCA, Maplewood here, so that's up the street from here. They have a large conference space there. Um, so we'll, we'll have the training there during the day. It starts about 8.30 in the morning, goes all the way to 5. 
And then after that, we go to dinner at Unison. So that's also up the street from here too. Uh, at that dinner, we have a keynote speaker, uh, Gu Wang um, of JD uh, Bang Realty, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about him. He's our main keynote speaker. Done over, has a billion dollar in asset under management. So he's someone you wanna kinda li listen to and hear from. Um, then the second day, Friday, we're going to have dinner at a cruise. So we're taking the Mystic Majestic Star Cruise, that's at Stillwater. And so all of this is provided for you guys as part of the ticket, which we'll talk about the ticket price later. But all breakfast, lunch, and dinner for those two days and two nights will be provided for you guys. Uh, my wife and I go to a lot of different conferences. Uh, we got to conference where they provide food, where they don't. We decided to do a conference where we're gonna provide food for all of you guys, food, drinks, uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's important because that way you don't have to worry about food, but the main reason that it's important is that the speakers and trainers don't have to worry about food either. So that means they have to come eat with you guys. So that means they have to talk to you guys. So it's part of, uh, it's part of networking, you know, so that you guys could network with our speakers and trainers. All of them are multi-millionaires, all of them are super successful, all of them are mom. So we, we I've never seen a conference where that topic of mom are like the headliners that are super successful to come share. Um, again, I've gone to a lot of conferences and we never had that, that's why we're putting that together. So that I could force them to come and talk to us, especially the cruise, right? Because you, you go on the cruise and you're gone for four hours. So you have, they can't leave, you have to entertain the people. So I'm forcing the speaker and trainer to talk to, the, to you guys that come to the conference. I think that networking opportunity is super important. Uh, and sometimes I know that like Bundo, that they've done really well, sometimes it could be intimidating talking to them. So have a few drinks at the uh, cruise and then you go talk to the speakers and trainers, okay? Uh, if you want more information tonight, you could go here, mongolbuilders.com backslash conference. If you want, I already published the agenda, or who's gonna speak, at what time, all that stuff, that's at the agenda there too. So if you guys wanna take a look at it throughout tonight, that's where you could go. Questions? All right. Okay, so this is the ticket uh, for today, which we'll talk towards the end of this too. Uh, if you guys wanna, uh, we're doing a special uh, price off today just for a bit, so it's only for today. So I'm sorry, uh, but we wanted to reward people that want to take action. So, uh, all right, so if you go to mobilebuilders.com later today, go to your uh, conference, or uh, backslash conference, uh, you could use the code PARTNERS40 because our speaker owns Partners Realty. So we, you use the code PARTNERS40 to get 40% off of the uh, conference tickets. The VIP is uh, about 600 bucks and the uh, general, if, if you're here, just do the VIP. And so you'll, you'll be able to take 40% off of that, which is about $238 off the ticket. Okay, so that's only for today. Uh, so there's a, we have a lot of different promotions go on, but we don't do like 40% promotion. That's really just for today, for you guys that are interested. Okay? Uh, question. Yes. Is that price only for um, single or is that for couples? Uh, this is for single. Single? Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the food is really expensive. <laughs> so it really just co covers all the food. Like really, the 40% off is at cost. So we're not gonna make any money off of it, but I wanted to, the important thing is I want you guys there to meet everybody. Um, and since we put the event together already, we want, we want as many of you guys as possible. Yeah. Um, how, many, how many tickets are still left? Uh, there's probably about 50 tickets left. Oh. So you guys, if you want to go, the today's a really good price. Yeah. Yep. You buy your tickets, you didn't get that price. I didn't, I saw that, I was like, oh You, you wanted to wait till today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take it from my kids. Yeah. Kids. And she's, she's not from here. Where are you from? I drove from California. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So she, she bought three tickets, one for her, one for the two kids, uh, to come to our conference. Another kid right there, sitting there. Yeah. What are you doing? Yep. He's 13. Yeah. So it, it's, to me, it's very valuable. I spent the last, all the people that have been coming are my personal mentors and my personal peers. 
I only invite them because I know them personally and they impacted me on a personal basis and in my business. So it's not just business, but like you will name everything too, you know, it, it all encompasses all together. And so the people that I invite, they're super successful already, but they're very humble and they want to share with our community. So big and more, all right? And it's going to be 8 in the morning, 8.30 in the morning. But towards the end, I'll share more information, who's going to be there and everything like that. I, I still want you guys to focus on the topic today. So, <laughs> Alright, so I'll answer more questions later. I just want to point it out ahead because I don't want you guys to like be like, oh, why didn't you tell me? Just, just to share with you guys ahead of time. Okay. Alright, so today's speaker. Alright, well, today's speaker is really, really, really good. Uh, and uh, I'm so glad that all you guys are here to learn from him. Um, I wanted him to do on this topic, to talk about this topic, because I wanted to learn about this topic. And so I was just like, come teach me, but instead of teaching me, let everybody else know too. And so that's why I invited him to come and talk. And he's super knowledgeable, always willing to share with me, been a great mentor to myself and my wife as well. So Hong Kong, he's a real estate investor, he's a broker, a partner's realty. I think you guys have, what, eight, how many How many agents you guys have now? Yeah, they have over 100 agents, real estate agents. My brother's part of their group over there. Uh, very knowledgeable uh, agents over there as well because you have a knowledgeable broker, right? That's why my brother went to hang out with them. Uh, he's also a general contractor and a, a real estate developer, and so much more, which Hong Kong will share uh, more detail of, of all the bio that he has in a little bit here. So with that, I want you guys to give a warm welcome, give a round of applause to Hong Kong, all right? Thank you, Tu. Um, tu wasn't lying when he said he started um, real estate in 2017 because I remember I had a listing and he sent me uh, a deal. And so I, I knew that this guy was going to be someone in the, who's going to stand up in the community one of these days and help out because tu, tu is very knowledgeable. And so, you know, sometimes we, we all still learn from each other. You know, you might, you lie, you lie. You have to broker. Actually, you, you, I learn a lot from my agents as well. And I think um, I kind of wish. The older generation was a little different from ours, and, and then I noticed that. But uh, going up, we're starting to change. We're starting to uh, share more information to our to our to our peers, and I think that's important because you know, like I remember growing up, you know, I, I hear uncles and and, um, and and people talk about secrets, and then and then when you ask them, how do you do it, and they're like, don't tell anyone, you know, and so <laughs> yeah. it's different now, and I think that we have leaders like two who are who's willing to take the time and with the, with the partner Nalina to have these events. And I think we all should be very thankful that we have these events to, to come out and just mango and learn, you know? You may come out to an event and you may feel like, hey, you know, I didn't learn too much, but at least you came out, right? That's the most important thing about just showing up. Like the first rule is just to show up, right? Um, but here's what we'll do at partners, okay? If you guys had a beer ticket, and if you don't drink your beer tonight, you give it, you put it in a box, and we'll, we'll do a drawing at the end. And whoever wins, partners will pay for a, a ticket for that person. So if you don't want to drink tonight, you don't have to. <laughs> you want that ticket, leave it here at the front, and we'll do a drawing at the end, okay? All right, and then, um, so a little bit of myself, my name is Hong Kong. Um, I'm so really new in real estate when I think about it, you know? I. I struggle, you know, I got married early and I, you know, hop on so many jobs. I think one time I was hired as a state trooper with the Minnesota Department of, you know, I was hired as a state trooper at one time. And then I almost went through a firefighter program to be the most home firefighter, but I backed up. Um, I was an insurance agent. So I, I tried many things. I was a dropout college student from law school. So the point of here is just, just try. There's a lot of things out there you can do to figure out, hey, is this the right path for me? And it may not be the right path for you, but at least you can cross back your checklist and say, nope, that didn't work for me, right? Um, so um, for me, I've been licensed since 2011. Uh, some of you can relate. 
I know my colleague Mai here, we start at the same time. And we, I feel like our stories are very similar. Every time I hear a post from her, I'm like, yeah, I remember that one time too. I was going through the same thing, you know? And so it's all about just relating to each other. At the end of the day, we all come from pretty similar um, roles, you know? Like, you know, Hmong, I'm gonna talk to Hmong too, okay? But you know, Hmong beats on me, right? And we work so hard for ourselves, for our parents, for our kids, and for our friends and families. And so, you know, the idea of helping each other is something I engrave to everyone I meet, is just help, help them. You know, if someone needs help, help them. Because you never know one day, like a bakari down, right? Um, I, I used to flip a lot of properties. That's when I was into real estate. But that was a mistake. If I were to redo this all over again, I would have kept every property. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm not really proud of the properties I flipped. Wholesale deals, I've done a uh, number of wholesale deals. Um, probably the easiest transaction you'll ever do in real estate. Um, construction. So five years ago, I realized I was hitting plateau. I was flipping houses, and I told my wife, you know, if I keep doing this, I'm working nights and weekends. I'm just, I don't see my kids, and you know, it's like every, it's just a, re a repeated process of like going to Menards, going to Home Depot early in the morning, right? You know, so then I realized I got to do something different. Let me scale up my business. And let me figure someone that I that I haven't touched. And so I I I, I got into new construction, and so I was very fond of new construction because I can see. A, a, a lot of a pot of land being built into a new home, right? And so, you know, when we rehab properties, we see before and after. And so that's something that keeps us going as as rehabbers do. It's not just the money, but it's also the work that we do. Um, so new construction, I've, I've built in, mostly in Minnesota. I've built a few in Wisconsin, Colorado, and just got done one in Florida. But it's I don't run the one in Florida, it's with the partners. So um, those are the states that I've done. Uh, commercial, I do do a lot of commercial. Um, the goal is that we also we all want to get into commercial, whether it's residential, whether, whether, whether it's real estate sales, with all construction. Uh, that's that's where we need to be. And so we have like, uh, with two of them, they have their events coming up, right? And the biggest guy in the event is JB Koo, right? And that's the guy who's done all that stuff. And so it, it would be an opportunity to actually, yeah, to get to know people like that in that field and see what their roles are like, you know, how is it similar or how is it different from yours? Um, so commercial, I've done a lot with the city, a lot with the, uh, the county, um, and then I do a lot of restaurant, restaurants as well. So if any of you guys are interested in building restaurants, I can show you guys some roles how to save some money building restaurants. Um, I currently hold some rental units. Uh, I think that number is probably not accurate anymore because I had to liquidate a lot of those to build my house. And then, well, we'll talk about that later, but um, I currently don't have that many anymore. I wish I had more, but I kept that last because I think that's something that I'm more proud of than the other rest. Because at the end of the day, you want to pay, you want to focus on your passive income, and so you know it's tempting to sell a property and make that 30, 40k, right, and move on. But you know if I could do it all over again, if there's a way you can hold it and just keep it as a rental, that's that's that would be a bigger game changer going forward. So before we also get started, let me get to know some you guys. I think I know some people in this room, but there's a lot of faces that I haven't met. So how many of you here are, are licensed real estate agents? And I promise I'm not here to recruit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it looks like less than half, maybe maybe about a fifth of the room is real estate, real estate agents, right? And, and, and two said it earlier, you don't have to be a real estate agent to invest. You don't have to. Now, does it hurt to be a real estate agent? It doesn't hurt. That, that education you pay for your course um, to get your license, it's totally worth it. It's, especially if you're gonna be a real estate investor. Now, what I like about being licensed is that now you're more regulated through the state, right? So now you're more bond to like follow the rules. That's kind of how I look at it too. It's, and that's really important because we live in an industry where there's rules and regulations. And so we have to be very careful what we do. Um, even being a real estate broker, I mean, if, if an agent does something wrong, the first thing I get is a violation from the Department of Commerce and say, hey, your agent violated this rule. And so even as a real estate investor, you may not be regulated to the state, but you know, it, you, you want to stay in that path of, of being good, I guess, you know, right? And so uh, that's also important. Um, 
age group. I know we've, I've heard some, a 13 year old, right? Yeah, my first, my son is 13 too. And so, you know, I can kind of relate where you're, where you're right now, and you're in the right course. You're, you're in the right room right now. It's, it doesn't hurt to start early. It doesn't hurt to get exposure, so that way your brain starts filtering <clears throat> other things that, that, you know, girls, right, school, all that stuff, right? It's good to start thinking about your future. I get it. My younger brother always says, dude, you gotta live too, right? You know, I am living. Because you know, I enjoy what I do, so I am living. So it doesn't mean that just because you're working, you're not enjoying. If you find work very enjoyable, you'll, you'll enjoy what you do every day. Age group, anybody under 20? One, two, anyone under 30? Few, okay. Under 40? Okay. 50? Under 50? Okay. Under 50, okay. So I, I remember I, I, I used to go to these training and they always say, when you're in your 20s, that's your learning years, right? And then your 30s are your grinding years. That's when you start working really hard and you know, and then 40 is when you retire. So you guys are all behind. <laughs> I'm just joking. But point here is that it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start real estate. The market is always gonna change and the more comfortable you get with real estate, the more you know how to navigate the market. And so this year, uh, we got a message from uh, NAR saying how many agents drop out of the field. And that sounds very scary. If you're a real estate agent, you're like, gosh, am I gonna make it this, this year, right? I mean, if you're a new agent coming in, you're like, did I come in in the right time of the market? Well, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta give yourself some time and let, let the knowledge you know, sink in. And the more you acquire these knowledge, the more you grow yourself, you'll, you'll figure out any market is good, actually. If the market takes a dump, it's good. If the market is very competitive, it's good. So there's not a bad market. What is the number that dropped off? I think it was like, I heard it was like 30,000 and then, or something, or 80,000, I can't remember, there was a lot. Because 60,000? National. Yeah, okay, 60,000. So, for maybe not everyone, but so for some of you that are here, like why are you considering real estate? Like what made you decide to maybe see a Facebook post and say, hey, I'm gonna show up today just to see what this guy's got, right? So anyone willing to take a bait? I want a million dollar house too. Okay, a million dollar house. I want to build a house too. Build the houses, okay. Generational wealth. Generational wealth, okay. Yeah, those are all good reasons to come out, right? Hopefully it's not just the beer. <laughs> just the beer. Last week was the fun, so I don't know if that sold more or the beer sold more, but. <laughs> and then long-term goals, right? We heard generational wealth. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, what I noticed with the home market is that at the moment we're starting to, we have a lot of power now. You know, I see, just the last three years, I see a lot of people upgrading. Buying five hundred thousand dollar houses, six hundred thousand dollar houses, selling their houses that they bought first time home buyers. So we're seeing a lot of that. So that means that there are a lot of wealth in the community. So if we can all somehow come together and work together, we all can be the next JV. And I really believe this because when I go out there and do a transaction with the Mikarena, it's different. Yeah, I, I learn from these people, and these are my mentors, my peers. But it's different coming out of that transaction than a mom brother or a mom sister. And so that's why at the end of the day, I still come back to my mom community and say, hey, this is kind of where I belong, no matter where I go uh, in the States here. And so to me, that's important. Now, before I jump into do construction, right, I think a big part of me is also about how do we rewire ourselves? Because, you know, we all had different, we're all, we're all the same background, Similar, you know, roads, but we all are genetically different. And you know, just like animals, right? We're different. So now when you have a pulse on Facebook and you decide to make a registration to come out, right? Now you have one thing in common is you want success, right? So you have that in common right now, but going forward, what are some of the things that you can change so that way every day you're consistent? Because 
The reason why this is important to me is because I look at a sport athlete, right? For example, we look at LeBron James, right? LeBron James is naturally gifted. Genetically, he is born with the body and he's good. You know, the more practice, the more uh, 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 practice he gives in, the better he gets. Now you can look at a player, uh, we'll think of it like Tom Brady, right? Who is undrafted. During the Columbine, he, he didn't even had a chance to like get drafted in the first two, three rounds. He was drafted in the 12th round, is it? But he put in the effort to learn the game, to watch the tapes, to practice, right? So that's an example of like where he, he outplayed a lot of people that were genetically, naturally gifted. And so that's why I think that's important. You know, our family background, right? If you had a, an uncle or, or a dad that did real estate or own a restaurant or own a plumbing business, you're more likely to do that because that's passed on to you. You know, I actually had a plumbing inspection today and the plumber tells me, my mom's 95 years old, my dad was a plumber, my grandfather was a plumber. And so, now, you might ask yourself this, well, my parents, what did they do? My grandparents, what did they do? Obviously, we, have Hmong, we crossed the Mekong River during the Vietnam War, so we never really had a chance to settle down for years to say, hey, how consistent are we, right? But now you're trying to change that generation from you to your kids, to your grandkids, is how are you gonna genetically rewire yourself so that way your kids and your grandkids are gonna be affected by the way you are? And so like for me, like I, I make my kids go out with me to look at projects. You know, I make them be a part of it, whether they like it or not. They get to rewire themselves to see this is my dad's daily work. I mean, I'm not expecting them to, them to do what I do. I just want them to have that background. Hobbies, right? Who in here likes to go fishing, hunting, playing a lot of sports, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I love sports too. But I realized that at one point I had to give that up because at the end of the day, my time doesn't allow me to do all that stuff. And so, you know, I really want to focus on the part of, of like, how are we going to rewire ourselves to do things differently than we've been doing the last two weeks, months, years, right? So there are things that are going to be just setbacks. And so you got to look at those things and say, how are, you, how are you going to take that out of the picture? People that are negative, right? How are you going to, how are you going to remove them from your life, right? Family events, I'm not going to lie. Anybody see me at events a lot? <laughs> well, COVID was just the excuse, but I had to tell myself, if I want to be successful, if I want to be where I want to be, I had to cut down the events that I normally go. And this involves friends, families, because at the end of the day, this is your success, not theirs. So you have to make that sacrifice. You have to learn how to say no and, and say, hey, I'm, I'm not gonna show, I'm not gonna go today. I rather spend time with my kids, um, build that relationship with them. Uh, I rather work and do something that I enjoy. So that's something that you're gonna have to rewire yourself. Drive an obsession, right? And anything you do, whether it's success, you gotta be obsessed with it. If you can think about it, you can taste it, you can smell it, you can dream about it, you've got a good chance, right? If, if you, you know, when I get stuck in, a, in an issue, I, I sleep on it and I, I, re, I, try to, I try to do it in my sleep so that way in the next day I'm just trying to follow what I, what I dreamt about when I was half asleep. And so it sounds crazy, right? It sounds crazy, but these are the things that are gonna set you apart from other people. It's just trying to rewire yourself. And then it goes to choices, right? Your choices that you make every day that are very important, you know what I mean? It's very important in your life, right? The people that you make the time to hang out with, right? They're really important in your life. And so you gotta be very selective and say, hey, I got friends and families, but these are the ones that means more to me and I'm gonna start just making the time with these people, right? Choices, if you wanna get into real estate, that course earlier was, was, was a very big discount, right? You gotta make that choice to say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. I get it, it's a few hundred bucks, right? But it's your investment there that you're talking about. So if you're here and you wanna, you wanna make a difference, it doesn't hurt to register for the course. So motivational style, right? I mean, I used to coach people when I was a case manager, because I used to be in social services as well. I didn't mention that. And as a social worker, I, I look at kids and I try to get to know them, right? Especially you know, high risk, me, you know, um, you know, we're not judging them on, on how they are, or the kid we're trying to figure out how do we get them to listen, right? 
And so us, we're human beings, we're like that too. How do we get ourselves to, to understand ourselves? Because we may think we know ourselves, but deep inside we have no idea how, how, we, how we're really like, right? So, you know, these are the, I took this straight from Google, something that I've been following for years, right? You know, goal-oriented, right? You probably reach to your goals through a direct or obvious route. This might lead you to a, to, to a reference book, your computer, to call an expert, wherever means is available. You usually prefer meeting in person when it's the most effective method and don't mind learning itself much fun, okay? That's some people there. And then you might, you might draw yourself in, 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 in one of these, maybe. A relationship oriented, right? You take part in the learning mainly for social contact. When you meet and interact with people, you learn things along the way. You may not like working independently or focusing on topics separately from the people, but that doesn't give you the interactivity you crave, okay? And then the bottom one is the learning oriented, right? The practice of learning itself drives you. The search for knowledge because learning delights you and you may become frustrated by anything that requires you to spend more time following procedures than on actual learning. So I know I'm that bottom one, that's me. You look at this and figure out where you're at. And then what I want you to do is say, hey, can you get better at the other one? And then can you also get better at the other one? Because in real estate or anything you do, right, business, if you can achieve more than one thing that you're at, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, I get it, you can try to be better at what you're not good at, that's you improving yourself every day. So in order to get better, you gotta do something that you're not comfortable with, right? So sometimes I still get nervous being on stage because that means I haven't done enough being on stage. So you figure out that part of you and you get better every day because that's important to you. And then I want to talk about the wolf and sheep concept, right? Now in real estate, okay, I'm, I'll be honest. There's a, it's pretty dirty out there. It's very dirty, it's a dirty game. Not to scare you or anything, right? But it's just to let you know that there are dirty people out there that would do whatever it is to take advantage of other people, right? And so at the end of the day, you just wanna be honest, be ethical, help those around you. If you do that, money will follow you, I guarantee you. If you do that, money will follow you, okay? It doesn't mean buy everyone a beer, okay? I don't know about that, but if you do something good to somebody and it takes one day at a time, that, that thing will follow right back at you. And karma is real, guys. Karma is real. So what's real estate, right? So we're here to learn new construction, but real estate is a bunch of everything. When we think of real estate, like it, in the terms of real estate agents, we think of sales commissions. You know, in construction, we think of buildings, right? But real estate makes up so many things that, you know, why every agent that comes in to my firm, I, I always, Try to imprint them that it's not just selling commissions that you can put your walls in that. You know, there's so many things sales, commercial leasing, construction, development, investment. And so, yes, it's going to take time for you to get used to learning these things. But once you've created a blueprint, you make mistakes, you keep going. That's how you start creating that blueprint in your head. And so the next time you see something similar, you get all water. So real estate is just like a learning another language too as well. So the retail golden rule that I always kind of follow is this. And this applies to rehabs, right? Those who rehab properties and those who build new construction, right? So when you go to Walmart and Target, and the reason why I bring this up is because I, when I had my first job at 15, I worked at Walmart. And every time I scan an ikha item, not new, you show up ikha percentage. I never knew what that was. But that's the market price that Walmart marks up. And so, you know, you think about it, market, market items are 34 to 46%, right? Now with the, with the loss too, right? Because people steal stuff, people think, you know, breaks and stuff. It's, it's come to an average of 24 to 28%. And I did take these data online, which I should have quoted there, but I didn't. Um, and it applies to real estate. So when we're flipping a house, are you doing the math in your head, right? Are you running the numbers correctly? Now let me ask you this. Who in here have rehab a house? Bought the property, did all the work, sold the property, and made $20,000 or $30,000. Who's done that in this room? Okay. So one thing I also say is, the question is, did you do all the work yourself? Because I'm, I'm in this example too, because when I started real estate, I ended up getting my siblings. 
I end up getting my family to help me paint the house. Everyone ends up working for me. I don't pay them anything, right? You know, right? And so really what it is is like, I just got a job and they came working for free and I made money off them and that's it, <laughs> right? So what I learned from rehab was that was all wrong. That was all wrong. If I wanted to do that, how about I just get my GC license and go, go take on a project, right? So rehabbing that way was wrong and I, I had to figure that out that the right way was to obviously have a GC do all the work, you're not involved, and when you sell that house, you pay yourself a commission too. If you're not paying yourself a commission, you're working for free. For real estate agents, right? Can you explain what GC is just for Yeah, GC is like general contractor. So someone who has a license to pull a building permit. So now we're gonna jump into construction now, okay? Sorry, I spent a little time because I think that's important. So I feel like it's not the inf information so much that you guys see. I'm sure you can find all this data online. So I think I want to just fill you guys in about what's important about, um, about yourself. I think that's really important. If you know yourself, if you change yourself, the information is here for you. So do you need a contract or license to build your own home? You want us to answer that? Take a stab at it? I'm assuming you pull permit. Pull permit? Pull permit, right? Okay, so. You don't. So, so if you're building a house, you need to. Yep. Permit. So let's say if, let's say, what's your name? Sandy. Sandy, right? Let's say Sandy. Let's say you bought a lot in St. Paul, right? And 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 then are you married? Yes. Okay. So you and your husband decide to say, hey, I want to build a house here for us to live in for the next two three years. Do you need a uh, to, to be a general contractor? You don't. Yeah, I, I don't. Yep. I would say I would need to hire somebody. Yeah, but let's say if Sandy knew somebody who can give her like, hey, I know these guys that does this and this and this, and say Sandy goes to the city of St. Paul and say, hey, I want to build my house, and this is uh, the plan that I want to build, I've hired a survey, I want to pull a permit and start building the house, right? St. Paul will let you do it, right? So you don't need a permit to build your own house. And most cities are, are pretty similar. Now, do you need a contractor license to build a house? for sale, right? That's the question where, yes. So you're gonna need a license to build a house if, you're, if your intentions are to sell the property. Versus your personal property? Yes, versus oh. your personal. So if it's your personal, you don't need to be a general contractor. There's the amount of time where it is personal property within Sorry, say that again? Is there a certain amount of time where it's your personal property at first, but then you sell it later, right? Because yeah, that's something I let you decide, but the rule of thumb is that usually the, the owner off rule with a lot of regulations is one year, right? So usually when you, you do a property like that, they want you to be in it for a year. Now, I see people sell, built a house and really didn't live in there, right? And the intention was to build to, to live in there. And the circumstances do change. And so now if you do that, it's okay. But if you keep doing that, right, then it's, it's, it's gonna be a red flag with the city. Yes. Yes. So those those trades are gonna have to have license. Now, every city is a little different, right? So, like for example, St. Paul is we're in St. Paul. If you're the homeowner, St. Paul will allow you to pull your electrical permit, right? But St. Paul has this affidavit form that says that you're the one doing the work. Now, obviously, a lot of homeowners don't know electrical. They're gonna sign that form and say they're gonna do the work, but they have somebody else do it. But are they gonna police you? No, they're not gonna police you. They just wanna make sure everything's done up to code. So, has anybody looking to get your general contract and license? Yes. I, I started with the Okay. So, unlike real estate, right, where it takes 90 hours and two courses, to get your GC license, you have to take, I think, two, if I remember, two days of course. It's about 16 hours total. You're not required to even be in class, right? It's not like you gotta be here for 30 hours and then you get a course certificate and that's, that's your ticket to taking the exam. You can obviously take this course for two days and then schedule the exam with the state and that's it. If you pass your exam, you can build a house. Isn't that crazy? Yes. 
They don't. They don't. Kelly they, they, yep, Kelly is always different. Yep. yep. Is a general contractor's license different from a residential contractor's license? Are there, are there two different licenses that you have to take? They're the same. So when you're a contractor, you're, you're technically also a builder if you want to consider yourself a builder, right? Some contractors don't get into new construction, so they just do a lot of small jobs. Um, now, roofing is a big industry in, in any markets. So, for example, in Minnesota, there's actually a test that's just for roofing modelers, just roofing jobs. But then the, the test for roofing and the general contractor, I was told is the same test. So, if, I mean, if you're gonna get your license, you might as well just get your general contract license. That covers you from roofing as well. Okay. Yep. So just getting a general contractor's license would qualify the same thing as a residential contractor? Yes, yep, yep. And you're allowed to do commercial work as well. Okay, so it's just kind of like one all into two. Yes, okay. yep. So yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think that. It's crazy to think that, that's why you gotta be careful who you hire, because you know they have the license, but the question is, you know, how experienced are they too, right? This is another reason why a lot of buyers just go with big builders because then they know they're covered, right? Now I do work with buyers that built houses and you know, those are the ones that are obviously more particular about what they're building and the kind of updates that they have in there. And so, you know, the biggest thing about being a GC is just general contractor or builder is just following the city ordinance and the state codes. So the test is broken down to mostly open book tests. So they test you on terminologies and stuff like that for the first, like I think 25 questions and were a four fourth of the, of, the, of the test and the rest is all open book. So the part of the open book test is to see how fast you can reference back to the materials because that's what you'd be doing as a general contractor, right? They don't expect you to know everything, but they expect you to be able to reference and find the answer. So it is a time test. So you have to kind of get familiar with the chapters and. And, and, and what parts are, are in there. Now, do you need to know construction? Do you need to be someone who's handyman or who's done the work to be able to take this test? No, you don't. It's actually better if you don't. It's actually better if you, you don't know this stuff because people that know construction in general, they, they're too rely on, their, on what they on their experience. And so when they take this test, they tend to fail. So. Can you, can you elaborate why they tend to fail? I'm just, I mean, maybe one thing. Like an example would be like, um, like roofing, right? Like the side, the thickness of the OSB board, right? Now they're used to doing half inch or nine sixteen, right? But the code may have a certain where it has to be, oh. you know. And so when they're answering this question, I'm like, oh yep, I do this. Uh, it's the answer is A, but then the answer is B, not me. Yeah, so they're so used to the way of doing things, so. Uh, it's hard for them to actually pass, it's, it's what it seems. So, now when you're a GC, you can pull the building permit, right? So, to break a house down into sections, right? You have the electrical, the HVAC, and the plumbing. Now, those three things are trade schools, to answer that question again. So that's something you have to go to trade school to acquire, to put in the hours, and then you have to test those exams to get certified to be able to be a licensed electrician. And so that does take a lot more time. So being a licensed electrician, HVAC, plumbing, is a lot of time. So the point I also want to make here is this. Now, when you build a business, and I'm going to jump a little too fast here, right? You don't want to build a business where you're the person doing all the work. You want to build a business where you can hire people to do the work for you, right? So, you know, like for example, I have a friend who's a licensed electrician, right? And he spent six years in electrical school and in the workforce to meet all the hours to be licensed there, right? So, but now he's a one-man kind of guy where he, he's jumping all over to, to do all these electrical jobs, right? And then I have a buddy who, who just got licensed a year ago and was doing construction, but he's hiring electrical guys to work for him. He's hiring all these people to work for him, right? He's actually making a lot more money just than the, than, than the licensed electrician. So at the end of the day, it's how you build your business around what you're doing. So construction costs, right? We all want to know this. Now, 10, 20 years ago, people were content, builders were content with making 10, 50% return on building new construction. Now, since the market shot really high, right? The average has been about 
So again, that percentage links back to that retail golden rule where you know, you gotta make around 25 to some percent there if you're building a new construction home. So even with the rehab, if I do my calculations and if, if I don't come on top of uh, more than 25%, then it's not a deal for me. Uh, same thing with a new build. If I do run my numbers, and if, if the numbers don't work out, then it's not one for me. Um, so hard costs. Hard costs are materials and labor, right? And then land is about 8%. And then you can't really see this one down here, but this is soft cost. Soft cost is more like the uh, hiring, the uh, architectural <laughs> stuff, surveying stuff, all that stuff that it's not materials, but it's things that you have to fork up to pay while building a house. So here are the numbers, okay? Here are my numbers. You might run across another uh, builder or another general contractor who has different numbers than mine, but these are the numbers I look at, and do they change? Yes, late costs, they change off because the market is not consistent, right? One year we had wood that was just shot up really expensive for lumber, right? So this number will always fluctuate based on the market we're in. But right now I would say for a builder, right? For a general contractor, if you're building a house and you're trying to figure out how much it would cost you to build the house, right? And we're not taking into consideration of upgrades yet. Now, upgrades are expensive, right? But you know what kind of like paper chain, you all pass for feet on. You times it by 95 to 125 square feet. That's the amount of amount that would cost you to build this house as a builder. So you're the builder paying that much. Now retail, right? You come on, if you're gonna sell this house, you come on, how much? Is the market at right? So what what, we, what I've been seeing in the market is it's about 165 to 250 a square feet, and that also depends on the area, right? So if you're, if you're in a, a very uh, niche area uh, like Grand Avenue, okay, it's going to be a little bit more expensive up there. So now if you're going to a lot, you're like, hey, can I make money off this land, the only house? You can run these rough numbers. Any questions? Can you tell me more? Can you tell me more if there is an example of when you built uh, and used, um, for lack of better words, capital stacking, like you know, low income, like my tech funds or things like that? And if this is too much, I mean, I can. Yeah, we can talk on the side about that. Okay. But yeah, there's there's definitely pro pro properties with the county that I've done that involves money like that, um, right? Where you have to meet a certain income, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. We can talk more about that. So I'm gonna run this really quick. Yeah. So the cost to build, is that gonna be the same for like a slate to build in different areas, you know? Because it's just kind of material costs and labor costs, right? It's gonna be the same to build the same cost in different areas. It's it's not sometimes um, if let's say if you have a bunch of your subs, right, that are in the twin cities here, and, and these are the guys that you use and you know their process, their stuff, and the prices. That's consistent, right? Now, the moment you jump two hours away, right, let's say you go to, you know, to Duluth, right? Now, you're dealing with different subs that you haven't worked with, which may be less, maybe more, you know? So that's the variable there. Now, and when it comes to different types of homes like Rambler, we don't split entry, we don't two story, right? Now, that does make a difference in, in terms of the price. Did I answer your question? Um, kind of, let's say not two hours away, let's just say, you know, the cost is gonna be the same. The only difference is that the, the land, the lot's gonna be the markup there. The land might run you 200K instead of 40K in the city. Yeah. So your, your, your construction cost is the same, it's just now you're marking up the land. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So run down on quick of a new house, right? This is just really quick, right? You secure a lot, right? You find a lot. Uh, you get you have house plans already, right? That's that's you get house plans for the for the for the lot, and obviously that house plan has to meet the city setbacks and everything. And then you get a survey, uh, you get permits, and then the cut right excavating right excavating cut that, and then they do the footings right. They do the footings, pour the pour the concrete there, and then they pour the foundation, and then the slab and the framing. Framing is what's going to take the most time. Framing, and then now you get into your electrical, heating, and you know, HVAC, you know, that, and those are all the rough ends. That's before they cover it. the panjana, right? The walls. And then you get into the exterior, which is roofing, siding, windows, and then your insulation, your drywall, and then your interior, exterior paint, um, tiling, fixtures, fixtures, your thing, the toilet, um, cabinets, countertops, doors, and then your, your, your other, um, your trades come back and finish everything, hooking up the sinks. 
the showers, uh, putting the lights in there, the, light, uh, the switches, the outlets, the covers, um, the heat covers, and all that stuff, and then the flooring with all the trims, and then the driveway, your concrete, your sod, and the building, or your, your, your final building permit uh, inspection. So that's like a quick run through of like this kind of steps. Um, and then the things that I would just note here for, for people not is things that you, you can consider doing yourself, right? Like that can save you some money would be painting, installing your own cabinets, flooring, maybe some tiling if you're getting tiling, right? I wouldn't do insulation ever again. <laughs> I wouldn't do drywall again. I would never pour concrete in my slab, never, right? right? I had a buddy who said, oh, I got it, and he poured his slab and it was horrible. So things that you don't, don't do to lead to the expert, let them do it. Now insulation, it's important because at the end on, you have to have a, a, a test, right? I forgot the name of it already, but um, you have to have a test. So if they come out and blow your front door, that test, and you don't, you don't, you don't meet that test, then it's a blow test, it's called blower test. And then you you don't get your house passed. So now if you hire a company that does that, if that doesn't pass, they have to come back and take care of it. So they have this little thing, like most inspectors have, and they'll, they'll run a little thing and they'll tell you exactly where, oh, there's a leak over there right there. And oh, there's a leak right there, you know? So that's why insulation, I feel like it's just, you save money, but if you're tall and it, I mean, it's, all, yeah, it's not worth doing. So being your own builder. So let's say those of you that are in here, right? You guys are here because maybe you guys are considered building your own house. Or you guys are considered learning how to, how do you start up? How do I, if I become a contractor or if I build my own house, what are the things that I have to do, right? So managing the city permits, right? So inspection, scheduling those. Those could be a headache. Every house I built, by the time I'm done, I got a folder that's like this thick. So it's, it's a lot of paperwork. Um, ordering materials can be a high day too. I think along the years I've gotten a little smarter on how to order materials, and so I'm spending less time doing that. Um, making sure the work is completed on time, right? And so, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not gonna dive too much into your subs. That subs, subs are the people that you hire that do work for you, right? You know, so I've used so many people that I've sort of had a kind of my master list of these are the ones that I, that I really like, right? You know, and, and, and sometimes it's not about who's the cheapest too. Sometimes it's about who's gonna get it done on time. Because your time is money. So it's important to get everything on time. You gotta schedule, you gotta follow up the guy. Hey, by the way, you know, are you guys ready to come out next week? Right? It's constantly scheduling, constantly scheduling, constantly following up with these subs. Because the time with spray hits, they're really busy themselves, right? Your project is not the only one on their, on their, on their schedule. And so sometimes you gotta be very adamant about, hey, this is a date that I need you to get it done by. And then you gotta be persistent, always calling them, always following up, make sure they come out and get it done. And then managing invoices, right? So, you know, proposal call, right? You know, look at the proposal. And you know, if before you guys leave, if you guys are in the process of building your home or built your house, we're looking into it. If you guys want me to look at your proposals to your to your estimates, I'll, I'll be happy to look at those too. So with a lot of agents that are building their house now, I'm walking through it and they'll send me a proposal and I'll be like, yep, that's, that's a little too much. You know, um, and then I'll get one, that, oh, that's good. And I've used that guy before and it's, it's reliable. So it's always not the cheapest quote, but it's always someone who's reliable and who's gonna do good work. So, so a lot of paperwork, 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 scheduling. So, you know, if you're the contractor and your partner wants to help you manage the paperwork, that would take a lot off your chest, okay? All right, so we're gonna jump into case study. All right, look into actual numbers. Yeah, right, go ahead, yeah. What's reality out there right now that we're in? So I took this property because I also made an offer in this lot, but I got outbid. And you guys might know who this guy is. He's also a loan builder too, very well known. He builds a lot of houses in St. Paul. Um, he, he normally builds the same houses, but this one was different. So I was like, oh, okay, this one's a little different. But um, so when he offered this lot, yeah, I think it was this one. He he offered more than what I offered. So I'm like, okay, well, you can have it. So he sold this house just not too long ago, uh, back in June of this year. So the sell, the sell price was 380,000, right? It's It's got 2,000 square feet. 2,000 square feet is the total finished square feet. So anything that's not finished, it's not counted. 
okay? So this one's a split, it, uh, this is a two level, a three level split. So it looks like it's one of those where you, you walk in and then you go down and you also go up, okay? And then, um, so, you can look at this in the MLS. <laughs> I offer 27, not even close. <laughs> All right, so I ran my numbers backward and I said 27 was my max price, give or take it. And so, in real estate, you're also gonna learn how to run numbers. So sometimes your numbers may be different from that guy's number or that girl's number. So if you run it backwards and you match, you call offer, you get to share, right? You'd be like, well, that was my best, move on to the next one. So based on the calculation, I'm just throwing an estimate based on my numbers, right? I don't know what his actual numbers are, but if I'm running the numbers correctly, he's he profited about 95,000 in this house, right? Didn't take him too long. Yeah, I think it was under a year. So 25% profit, lost 25,000. Any questions? Net of gross. What? Net of gross. Sorry. Profit. Net of gross. Oh, that's net, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, you get to how you fund it, how, how they get funded. How do they fund it, right? Yeah, I won't get too much into funding, but there's a lot of ways you can do it, right? There's, if you have cash, you can do it yourself on cash. Uh, you can, if you have properties, you, you can take equity from properties and do it. Um, if you want to get a new construction loan, you can get a new construction loan and do it too. But obviously, when you get a loan, it, it, there's a lot more complications in place too. There's a lot more restrictions. The process takes a lot longer. There's more paperwork involved. And so usually when I do new construction, I like to just do it on cash. The reason why is too because I can control that and it's faster. Now, I've done new construction for clients that are, are loans. I still do it, you know? but it is more of a headache. Is it a lot price included in the 250 for the bill? Oh, for the, for the amount that he, that, no, it's not. Okay. So did I do the math right? <laughs> I think uh, 25% times the total is like 95,000. 95? Three, or three, 380 times 25% would be 95,000. 95,000, yeah, that's what I ran based on his profit, but if you take 380 minus uh, his construction cost of 250, right? And then minus the lot. Uh, the is it, you said yeah. it's cheaper to buy? Yeah, you know, which one is more profitable? Because, for example, you know, you build a deal, you know, the home is going to take a longer time. But if you are by the assistant home, then you fix it. Yeah, it, it really depends. So the reason why I, I urge people to do construction is the point that it's supposed to open your eyes to a different level. So there are profits in rehabs that are higher than new construction, and there are some where it's the other way around. Uh, the point here is that the moment you touch new construction, your eyes are going to open somewhere else. So you may still do rehab, but you may not want to do rehab as much. So last year when the cost went up really high, a lot of builders and a lot of countries took a hit. And so like I had one that I did last year that I, I, I walked out with 20,000 because of it hit the winter market, interest rate shot up, and then I, then I, I didn't walk out any as planned. And so there are, yeah, new construction is, and I'll talk more about that at the end, right? Um, is it the same for capital gains? for new construction to a flip, or is it different? It's how you have your tax person do your tax fee. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes? I know you got there's many questions on this, so I'm sorry to take up some time. But uh, buying a pot of land, is there a specific time that you recommend to buy it and then start building on it? So let's say something like, if I want to buy a pot of land right now, boom. But I know it's going to be, when it gets done, it's going to probably be around winter time. 
is there that's something to consider it from you as a developer? Yes, so real estate agents you know this, right? You know that when the winter market hits, the market takes a little tank there, right? You're done. You start getting your buyers uh, offer with closing costs, right? Because this market is lower. So the rule of thumb with new construction is that I like to start excavating in October or, or maybe late September. Start building that time and then by the time you get done six months, seven months, you hit the spring market. So that's that's how you wanna you wanna build. Now there's pros and cons, right? Now if you build in the winter you or in the fall time, you you, you gotta go through that winter, that brutal winter, right? That Minnesota winter. Now if you build in the springtime, you gotta deal with the rain. So this year there has been a lot of rain, but previous years where there's a lot of rain, you don't OSB boards, you don't you don't get it covered, it's gonna start bubbling up. And so that could be a, 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 a deal, a breaker there too. So, so back, back to what you're saying is, let's say during, let's say it's winter time right now, is it harder to get subcontractors out there and working on the property, or are you paying them more to have them work in the nice cold weather? Now, concrete guys will be a little more in the winter, and, and concrete's gonna cost you a, a good chunk there, right? In terms of the other stuff, it's, it's pretty much similar. Now, winter time, they're also slower too. So think of it, you know, if you're hiring a big company, they're a lot slow in the winter time. So they're gonna get their work done faster too. And so the rule of thumb is if you get the framing in, you got the rough ends before Christmas, get it heated up, you got the whole winter to do the inside, and then by the time the spring hits, you can do the siding, everything, do the sod, and then you're done. So that's the process I like better with Minnesota. Yep. I didn't know if you see the number, but I do know that number. I do know that property. Yeah. So that's spot on. That's spot on? Yeah. You know the guy, right? Yeah. Okay, see, I read this number based on what I know. And I'm like, okay, this is this is not bad, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do a case study number two here. Okay? So this one here is in Woodbury. And so these are all the big builders. I think this is uh Lenar or something, yeah. And so this one sold uh, was in the market for not even a day, I guess. 492. Okay, the square feet of this house is 2505. But you're gonna see I have two numbers there. The reason why is because this house was finished with an unfinished basement. And so we had to look at two factors. Because the other house, that was all the area in the house that was done. This one is a little tricky to see with new story and again. Builders like to leave the basement unfinished because the appraisals are still gonna come high with, 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 with new construction. So if you, if you run the numbers at like, let's say if the square feet was only 2,500, right? Um, they're paying, wait, no, 2,500, they're paying almost $200, a, almost 200 a square feet on this one. Now the number, the cost to that this builder, Kona, or no, actually this is, sorry guys, ignore what I just said. I got, I got to flip the round. This, the other one is the one that, it's, that doesn't have a finished basement. But this one, oh, this one does, okay. Sorry guys, it's been a long day. <laughs> below, below, no, not finished basement as well. So if you run the numbers, it's, do, do builders spend big book or big set, you know, based on rough estimates. Now, Lennar, DR Moore are big companies. So if I want to take an accurate guess, I think they spent less than 125 square feet. Reason why is because they big build another now they're connection to cheaper subs now. So the electrical work, the, the, the plumbing work are gonna be a lot less than let's say if I went in there and hired somebody because they have contracts with big union companies, right? And so when they have big contracts and say, hey, we're gonna let you guys do all the plumbing work for 20 houses, okay, the prices are a lot cheaper. So another reason why builders, big builders make a lot more money than small builders like us. So, I mean, if I'm running the number, potentially 160K is what they, what they made off this house. Now the lot, I don't know how much they bought it for, but with these big builders, they buy a lot of land and they subdivide these lands into sections. So I threw twenty thousand dollars, which, which is pretty generous. I I would be surprised if they spent less than twenty. So so now you can see why big builders are still building so many big, so many houses because they're, they're making so much money, and you you know they can probably get it done in four or six months. This one just sold recently too, uh, July eleventh. So. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I can email out if you guys want it. Now, what you guys are all waiting for, how to build a million dollar home. 
right? <laughs> so now the, the concept of jumping from a small house to a big house does have a lot of variables too, right? It doesn't mean that because the bigger it is, the more the, the, more the square feet. That can change. It's like, I, don't, I mean, it's like a graph that goes like this, right? And then once you hit a number, it goes like this for a while. And then you gotta hit that number again to go like this. I don't know how to explain that, but with big new construction homes, I've done a, not, I've done a few of these. This one is actually my personal home that I'm building. So earlier when I said I have less rentals now, it's because I had to liquidate these rentals and I had to build this straight up cash because I didn't want to deal with the banks. Now, going back, I regret. I should have taken a new construction loan, right? <laughs> Interest rates went up, so I should have taken a new construction loan. So that's my mistake, but point was I want to get it fast, but then, you know, you build a house and your, your, your projection is six months and then it ends up being a year. You're like, oh, when is this house going to ever be done, right? So I'm actually not even done yet. I'm like 95% there, almost done. Because I ended up having to do some of the work myself. So square feet of this one is 6,900. The lot was 80,000. Uh, I had to pay $15,000 for them to remove all that trees. There was a lot of trees there, right? And so I ran my numbers. I'm shooting to be at $95 a square feet. That's because, again, I did some of the work myself. Um, and then with the bigger home it gave, you know, you actually ends up, you end up paying a little less too. And so at this point, my estimated is that I'm spending about 658,000 in the house. Now upgrades, so I didn't talk about upgrades earlier, right? But, you know, a lot of the big builders now, they don't use expensive updates. And if you look at their lighting, it's very basic lighting. You look at their flooring, it's very basic flooring. Now, it's not anything that's, that really, that's expensive. Like maybe it's not an like engineer hardware floor, right? And so with my house, I did have to upgrade a lot of things. Like I didn't go with regular vinyl. I went with more engineer hardware floor. I went with, you know, a, a better line of cabinets, you know, and then we did do more, you know, additional things to it. So the upgrades can be about $10 a square feet extra if you're spending a little more. And so just that chunk is about 70 grand. And the biggest thing is windows too. So if you want nice windows, you're gonna have to pay maybe double or triple the price that would you normally pay. Uh, through Menards or, um, or a different line. So I'm looking at this house all together. Once I'm done, about $822,000. Now retail, I'm, at, I'm guessing if I want to be conservative, or maybe conservative, I just say one mil. Conservatively $1 million, right? But if I did 165 times square feet, I'm at 1.1 mil. So if I decide to say, hey, I'm going to sell this house, I think the return is about 28%. And so this would probably take me about more than a year. But did I manage this full time? Did I go here every day? No, this is like a part-time thing that I did on the side. So you can have a full-time job, you can do real estate, you can manage something part-time like this and have a really good return. Any questions? So um, for you personally as a developer, do you prefer doing kind of like um, the large like cookie cutter homes or would you prefer like high-end you know, when you're, a, when you're a small builder like this, you don't really have high-end clients yet. And so you're still, so a lot of remodel works I do, I do do a lot for folks in Minnetonka, so they have more of a real estate budget. Now when it comes to new construction, Indian, you know, at the end, sometimes you're, you're still trying to help your client, right? So if I sat down with somebody who wants to build a house, sometimes I end up cutting my costs just to give them the upgrade. And so, you know, with Lenard, I'm not, the reason why they don't upgrade is because they know, they've done their research. They know that people like you guys that are upgrading you know, to the next home, you guys aren't gonna be picky. That's why they don't do upgrades. Their houses aren't meant for super, super, super rich people. Let's just be honest with you, right? Now, am I ever gonna get a client who's like that? Probably not because my, my reputation is here versus someone who's done it for 20 years, right? So, no, I've, I, I haven't done any for folks, but I've done for people that are, are building, you know, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand houses that, you know, you you follow. Well, you call it yes. It's not all the updates, but it's some updates. The new construction sells pretty fast. Like, how, how long does it take to sell, right? Yeah. So, so let's say it's done today. Let's just say this is the house you got done for today. You know, it depends on the market. Also, I mean. If you're in the winter market, it's gonna take maybe a little longer, maybe a couple weeks longer. If, 
let's say let's say spring would have sold in two days, right? Winter might be a week or two, or maybe even a month. Um, depending on the updates too, depending on when the interest rates at, uh, depending on the finishes, because that's kind of a big deal. Now, I do mostly small homes because reason why is because I'm not saying that I don't want to make it perfect, but you're always going to have imperfect imperfect in a house. You need, you need to perfect, you know, right? You can have a home inspection, they still find things that, that the city inspector didn't find. So when when, when I sell three, four hundred thousand dollar houses, it's faster and easier. Because the way the market is, right, there's more people that are, that are able to qualify for four hundred versus someone who, who's qualified for eight hundred, huh? Your pool of buyers are less. So that also depends on the type of house. So St. Paul is a really good place to build. Because why? Because it sells pretty fast in St. Paul uh, because of the demand, and you're not investing too much money to, to have a decent return. So speaking of selling, and you may be covering this in the future or later in the presentation, so if so, just let me know. But I'm not an agent, in, but I've heard that when you build a new house, that there's a premium for the new house, so don't rent it out, don't live in it, just immediately sell it as a new build. Can you talk to that versus deciding to live in it for a year? For, for keeping for it as a rental property. Are you talking about a premium? Yeah. Can you be specific about what kind of premium? Oh, or, like people will be willing to pay more if it's a brand new house versus someone, a year old house. You know, appraisals are gonna go based on what's the data in the last months. Um, now, is it gonna be easy to sell? Because you might have those buyers that they want a new house. So I think the only difference is that you're opening your pool of buyers to those that want a brand new house. But I've seen houses that are built one year and they've been living there for a year and they sold it perfectly fine too. So it, it, it I mean, there's a lot of variables, market, you know, timing, um, I mean, the, the idea of having a brand new house is, is definitely more electrifying. So you're gonna have more buyers wanting, than wanting that. So that does make a difference, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. So we'll just double check that this number I have here is accurate, right? So this is a house down the block from where I'm building. So where I'm building my house, um, there's one guy who's a neighbor and he owns a lot of, a lot of, he owns an excavating company, so he's really well known. He excavated Rose, Rosedale Mall. And so he, he turned all this farm that he owned and he's developing it. And so like, like this example here, this is a house that, he, uh, that his builder is working on. And so if you look at this house, it's closed just, I think this was in 2020, 20, I thought it was 2023, but I think I could be wrong. Or, it looks like it just recently closed. For 740,000, 740, right? The lot, I'm just gonna estimate 60. And I, I gave it a, I gave it a bump there because I want to be conservative. Um, my guess is this builder probably spent um, about 105 a square feet. Now that's assuming that the basement's not finished. So this is not one that doesn't have a basement. So the tricky thing is like it's not 2610. That's not the finished finished square feet. It's actually. 3802, it's just the basement's not completed. So now you have to set, you have to use two set of numbers. You gotta use one where you, you're trying to calculate the total finish and then the one that's only finished. And so, you know, if I come up with these numbers, it's only about 194 square feet, assuming that everything was completed, right? Now, with only, um, with only two thirds of it finished, it's 283 square feet, right? That's pretty expensive, right? But are, are, are they afraid of the, of the appraisal coming in low? Probably not, because there's probably other builds like this that are selling too. And so they're, they're gonna use those data to back this up. And so the return profit on this one is about 281,000. That's a really high return on this one. And so this allows you to have some comfort. So if you, before you build your house, right, you might just run some comps and say, hey, um, I'm gonna build here in St. Paul. Let me find any other houses that are similar to what I built, what I what, what I just what I'm gonna build, right? And say you you look at the comps, and you see that you know, okay, it's pretty comforting that 380 is the sell price, right? Now the only thing you gotta consider now and where we're at for now is that you gotta consider the winter that's coming up, and you gotta consider you gotta consider what's gonna happen in the market, right? We don't know that. Now three years ago, 
it was a good time to build. Right now, do we know if it's a good time to build? Yes, no. I mean, do we, are our, our rates gonna drop any lower? They could, they could not. But always remind yourself this too, right? We've just been really spoiled with the low rates. You know, that's it. So what if the rate stays like this and goes up eight, nine, in the next years, right? That could be normal too. So, you know, you, you can't always just compare years, right? But th don't let that stop you from doing what you want to do. On a bad year, how much can you lose? On a bad year, how much can you lose? Because you're not always going to profit, right? So, this is why you don't ever want to buy something at retail price, right? Let's say you bought a concert ticket at retail price. And you can't go to your concert. Right? What are the chances you're gonna make money off of it, right? The only the only way it is Taylor Swift, right? You might that might go up. Right? So the rule of thumb is if you don't buy it on retail, the worst thing that can happen to you is you break even. Because you have that cushion backing you up. If the market tanks, would it tank 28%, right? Probably not. So so that's that comfort there for you. So, can you lose money? Yes, you can lose money, right? But, but allow this to be that comfort. Because if, you, if you're building your house, you're paying, you're paying wholesale price. So when we talk about wholesale deals, now we're talking about wholesale new construction. This is you building your house at wholesale price. Because the difference is that if you went on and hire a general contractor, right? They're gonna do all the work for you, but they'll get that chunk there, right? Or some of it, if it's not all. Does that answer your question, Tim? Yeah, yeah, it depends on what your niche is too, you know? I, I know a guy that would only do rehab. He's really good, but he'll only do rehabs, right? Why is it partner's agent having so many questions back there? <laughs> do we not have enough training? I'm good, we will not. Based on this example, what is kind of your out of pocket uh, cost, you know, if you were building the house? If I build this house? Yeah. So if I was building this house, this would be my, this would be my out of pocket. Four, under 400. And if, if I add a lot to at 60, 450. So you're, think about it, you're, you're, you're the general contractor here, okay guys? Your cost is the wholesale cost of the building. So what, what I'm trying to show you guys here is that being a builder or being yourself, you're, you're getting these numbers. Obviously that's gonna fluctuate based on who you use too, right? You know, so, I mean, and, and if, people, if you guys have any houses you guys are looking to build, I'm willing to share my contacts too. So I have subcontractors that do really good work that I'm willing to share that with you guys. So it's not like you're going out there fishing someone who you've never used and who can take uh, advantage of you. So I'll give you contacts of mine. I mean, I don't own these contacts. They're just my colleagues, my friends, people that I work in the field. So I don't own any, anything to these uh, subcontractors, but I'm willing to share the contacts with you guys. Am I taking mentees? Yeah, we can talk more about that. <laughs> so, new construction, is it risky, right? Anything you do is risky, guys. You you drive, you get in your car every day is risky, right? You eating on a pretzel is, is risky. Anything you do is risky. So yes, new construction is risky. But the point here is that if you do your due diligence, do your run your numbers, right? Understand the market, right? Have someone else run your numbers with you, then, I'd say the favors on your end. You're, you're more likely to succeed than to, to fall apart. Now, um, there's a lot of videos on, on YouTube that you can also learn. You know, now we live in the technology stages where you can find a lot of information online. Um, and talk to your, talk to your um, uh, colleagues. So talk to people that built houses and see how do they manage to run their projects. How's that different from another contractor? Um, is it worth building your own home and have instant equity? Who, who wouldn't want that, right? I always tell all my buyers and say, hey, if I can control the market, I want you to get into a house that you have instant equity right away. So it's not like you're paying 20 years and you're finally down, you know, you finally have equity, and that's assuming the market stays the same, right? So with new construction, in the day, you know, it doesn't matter where the market is at. 
Um, I think that if you build it for yourself, then you will be fine. Now selling, I can't say that for a fact because the market changes, right? But if you're building for yourself, have instant equity in there right away, you know, that's always a plus. Can you build for families and friends and clients? Yes. So, you know, um, I try to get real estate agents to be more familiar with this too, is to understand that, you know, at the end of the day, whoever has a full-time job, right? You spend eight hours at your job every day, right? You might have some time for friends and family, but pick up a side, side thing, you know, and let that, see if that takes you to somewhere well, oh, you now you're actually just building houses now, or now you're doing something different. You're only a, or running a restaurant or, or whatever it is. But you can build homes for families and friends if you're a contractor, and you can offer your rates. You can offer really good rates for them, but the last thing is, would you work for free, okay? Don't ever work for free, okay? You have a value in yourself, and so your time is also money. But if someone asks you for like, hey, I'm building my house, can you walk me through the steps? Can you help guide me, right? Yeah, of course, help help that person. Help show them the ropes, help them run numbers, help them in that instance, right? But I'm not saying spend your entire time being the GC on it, and then you walk in and you don't make anything. Because at the end of the day, your time's important. You know, your time's really important to you. Um, you, you you're, you're, here, you're in the session for a reason. You're, here, you're in the session to learn, and to probably hopefully grow your your um, your real estate portfolio, whether, whether that's rental, rehabs, or new construction. But I think what I like about new construction is it's very rewarding. So, you know, go well done, you feel very satisfied. Like, it's not like, I mean, I feel satisfied with rehabs too, but it's a different feel. Because you see a, a basement ground up, and you see everything go in, you see, you know, you know what a sump pump is, you know what drain tile is, you know what a radon system is, you know, all that stuff that you, you've you heard about, you've seen it, but you haven't seen it the way it's, you know, it's ever installed, I guess. And so, so the biggest takeaway from my life and in real estate is, you know, my mom always said to me, right, Lucia, she talk, all right, the time doesn't wait for you to get up and brush your teeth so you get to the bus on time. The time doesn't stop you. So take away things that does not matter. So I'm not talking about, you know, usually we think about like, what are some of the things we can do, right, to be better? So let's start with this. Start subtracting things in your life that doesn't mean anything to you. If you start doing that, I think you're start filling that in with better things. I guarantee it, you know? So start reducing the things that don't matter to you. Um, your goals aren't set, to, to, set to, to, be, to, to be achievable. So it doesn't mean you set a goal, you have to achieve it. You don't have to achieve that goal, you know? That goal is supposed to guide you to whatever you're doing. You know, because my goal when I started real estate was this. I don't, 2012, I bought my first flip house. I didn't know anything about flipping a house. I, I did this house without pulling any permits. I did all the plumbing. I was all through YouTube. I was doing electrical. I was installing cabinets. You know, I was doing all these things that I was learning, right? And so, you know, my goal was just, I want to be, I want to be wealthy. I want to have time off. I don't want to go to work and have a manager always say, I can't take time off, right? So my goal was just, I didn't want that life. And so it, it, it guided me to, to touch real estate. And so point here is that your goals doesn't have to be exactly what you write down. It's supposed to guide you to something that you may be very, you know, efficient with. And, th and that doesn't have to be real estate, but the foundation. I think real estate is like the foundation of business, you know? It's like the foundation. It's like that car that takes you to another car, you know? It's like the gatekeeper or something. And life isn't a race, so don't look at yourself and compare and say, hey, this is my classmate. Now she or he is doing better than I am, right? Don't compare yourself. You just gotta say, hey, this person is doing really well. Let me have lunch with her. Let me get to know her. Let me see how she does it, right? That's the kind of mentality you want, right? Don't compare yourself. Don't put yourself down because at the end of the day, if anyone can do it, go in with all you have, right? And so I was, I was thinking like, if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to do it, right? Right? If, if you want it bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. I remember as a kid, my brother was very into video games. And, you know, back then, video games were 50 bucks, right? This is back in the 90s too. $50 a, a, like a, a Nintendo 64 game, right? But this kid won this game so bad that every week he saved up, he saved up, and he was able to buy it, you know? To think that's crazy, $50, right, for one game. 
right? So if you want something really bad, you know, you can do it. But you don't want it bad enough, that's all. And so the conference is definitely a good eye opener to get in there. You know, you might walk in there, it might feel like a small fish, but that's not the mentality. Go in there and say, hey, one day I'm gonna be like one of these guys with these girls here, right? Go with that mentality. And then, you know, every day, at the end of the day, you have to motivate the king, right? The only one who's gonna motivate you is the king. So, like, your, your mentors are gonna mentor you, but they can't motivate you. They can only guide you to a point, but every day, so you have to get up and say, hey, I'm gonna be consistent. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do what I used to do here, right? So, so that's it. I know I hopefully I didn't go over time, but I went, I went really fast because I know that if I did this training, it's, it's a lot more information than this, but this is just kind of the surface stuff for you guys to take home and just kind of like uh, let it sink and let it, you know, let it process because, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it is a lot of work, right? But the idea is that you wanna get better, you know? Because my goal is, is I want to be like two. I want to be like JB and then I want to be successful. You know, my you know money is important, but money allows me to live freely. Money allows me more choices. Money allows me to help my the loved ones that I, that I that, you know like my parents. You know, and so you know I mean real estate is definitely that vehicle. And you guys are in the right room tonight. Um, and I urge you guys to continue to show up to trainings uh, that two has and. You know, if you gotta make that registration, go for it. But if you don't want your free beer, leave it over here and touch your luck, guys. <laughs> All right, thank you, Hong Kong. Give them a round of applause, guys. Who, who's ready to do new construction tonight? Who's ready? Now, Lee, raise your hand. I know you want to. My wife's been bugging me to do new construction for the last, like, five years since we started. <laughs> so, we got to do new construction now, all right? Uh, we're almost done. I'll just uh, say a few more words and then we can... Uh, uh... Could you leave that on? Yeah. Well, I was just going to jump on it. But I gave you guys a piece of paper here. So, I'll go through here in a little bit. Tonight, you guys, uh, Hong Kong, you're gonna stay for a little bit. Okay. Tonight, you should, you guys should go back and get Hong Kong's information. Don't write it down, so that you could at least like that would be the conversation started. Hey, Hong Kong, I was able to write down your information. Can you write it down, and then you could talk to? Him. There you go. So don't write it down. Like, Okay, so that's good, right? New construction, build a million dollar home. Uh, Hong Kong, I think you should just sell that. I have a couple of buyers. Where, where's where's, where's, where's uh, Europe? A couple of buyers, they, they'll buy the million dollar home. So you could take the 300. <laughs> Within the year, part time, right? All right, so um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll just share a couple of things. Again, our Mobile Builders Conference is uh, the uh, coming uh, this August 24th, 25th. Uh, that's about a month from now. So I hope you guys could come. Uh, I want all you guys to come. So that's why we're doing uh, we're doing the special today. All right. Uh, I want to talk about a few of the people that's going to be at the conference. Uh, so one of the guy there, this guy right here. All right. You guys, who who knows Michael? Talk about here, top. Few you guys. Okay. He's been a big mentor of mine ever since I moved here to Minnesota too. Uh, he's gonna be one of our speakers over there. Uh, and I'll, I'll bring him uh, in a little bit to share. But um, he's gonna be one of our speakers. He always taught me about financial stuff, generational wealth, uh, really to build yourself, right? So with that said, I want, you guys are, uh, you guys are very lucky that he's here. Uh, I, I was able to get him to come over. I begged him to come over. No, <laughs> I didn't, but, um, Really, he's been uh, very supportive of me and my wife in our journey, and really mentored us and helped us along the way. Uh, he's done a lot of developments as well. So one of the largest development they've done, uh, it's I think a 60 unit. Um, and I know that he's not a general contractor. You're not, right? He's not a general contractor. He does not own uh, a drill. 
uh, he does not own a hammer and he's able to build 60 units. So he'll be, he'll, maybe he'll talk a little bit about that as well. But he's going to be at the conference. So with that, we're going to give a round of applause. I want to welcome Michael Tuff. I need to say a few words to you guys. For those who don't know, no Korea, so I get to near to Tushi now, many years ago. Right? Those of you know you, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm building a computer system to score his he's not scoring. <laughs> so, so Michael, uh, he's going to be an opener at the conference. Why don't you share a little bit about your background and maybe give some advice to everybody that's here. Talk maybe a little bit about your development too, because uh, that was a big development over there. Right? But, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Michael Zemai Yaton, and um, I live here since 1978. I came in 1970 when I was 13. So they kind of brought me to uh, Rose back in 1990 and also doing insurance back in 1987. And uh, I graduated computer science, mathematics, and physics. So I worked with the state of for 19 years as an assistant analysis for the state of So I designed those welfare programs, the medical system programs for the state of And, um, you know, I, I always figured out that, that uh, business is uh, the thing that I, I want to do. Yeah, what what we bring it to uh, business full time is um, back in 2007 when my brother passed away, and uh, within a 10 months time, my father also passed away due to a heart attack, and that gave me a lot of uh, encouragement to go full time to a business and leave my job alone, because I used to own my two business and work full time in the state, but that take a lot of my time away from my family, and so. Um, before my father and my brother passed away, my only goal is to make money. Earn enough money so I can support them. Buy the airfare, buy the places to go, wherever they want to go, I support them. But the bad thing is I didn't get to join them. You know, because due to my works, my schedules. So I figured that since my, uh, so I my mom, my brothers, and uh, all the kids, all the children, so I decided to uh, quit my job, they stayed in so I had. I asked the state to lay me off. And they don't want to lay me off because uh, I'm going to do an unemployment claim, right? <laughs> so I figured six months of unemployment, I should be able to pick it up myself. And that's, that's, that's how I started my business back in 1987 and 90. So I, I do a lot of rental properties. I even buy property where I haven't seen them. I bought it and then I drive down it, I close on the property, and then I go find my property. That's the kind of risk I took back then. And I sold most of my rental property before the market crashed. Yeah, and uh, that was a good thing. I didn't know the market was going to crash, but I did. And then after down the market, market crash, I bought, and instead of buying rental properties, I should have bought a lot of houses during the market crash. But because, um, you know, I got tired of rental property. So I didn't buy any more rental property. I bought a lot of lots instead of some home. So I sold, I bought lots and I sold lots that I when the market pick it up. And that, that lot that I bought on Southern Street, is, uh, that's $50,000 lot, 1.3 acres. And at first, I would to build a house in there because I moved back from Forest Lake. I have a house in Forest Lake, Forest Lake, 10 acres on it. So I want to build a house in St. Paul. But with, with the 1.3 acres, that's a lot of land in St. Paul. So I decided to pursue it to all the Avenues. So we built a, a multi-family, an apartment on that property. Uh, that property is, it took us six years. Six years because I don't have money. I'm just broke as everybody else from that. So I need city. I need money from the city. It took me six years to get that project going. But uh, it's a 90, $90 million dollar project, 60 units. And that's it, 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 a lot of work. If, you, if you're going to build this kind of properties, you have to really evolve in politics. Whether you like it or not, you do have to. Because if those are the people who make decisions on your project. You need to know people who are inside out. And because the, the connection that I have, the other public officials, the city people, I was able to get the property for It's because due to my uh, relationship with all the those public officers. So if you need to know about how to build that type of product, uh, go 
lose sleep, don't be afraid to call me, talk to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm already 58. I don't know how much time I right? I'm only 20 more, 20 more years to go. <laughs> the days, the days very retired. But Michael, that one, $19 million, where did you get nine? Did you put $19 million down for this project? Or, uh, or? No, I, I actually get uh, $12 million free. Yeah, $12 million free. So six years is worth the wait. All right? Yeah, that, it's already built an aggregate of $12 million into the market. So it takes time, but it, it can be done. See, in, in rose in apartment complex, you have uh, two types of product. You have a uh, tax credit apartment complex or market rate apartment complex. So if you reach like no goal, you get the market rate, right? <laughs> yeah, because you have the money, you spend all money. That's why you get to see the whole and put and everything you do. But if you, you broke like me, you need help. <laughs> Right? So you want to be broke like Michael so that you can build a $19 million property. All right? So that's how, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, I know you have a partner on this for one of your partners uh, to help build, right? Yeah, since I didn't know much about uh, commercials, uh, apartment complex like that, I partnered myself with Guru JV Realty. He, he's an act. He, he had an expert in the commercial. Not really at that time, not really into multifamily, but on uh, commercial sites, it's really good. Is the best of the best right now. That particular six years ago, he's worth about seven seven hundred million dollars. Now his assets worth a million a billion dollars. So, in going, we're going to touch on JB. For those of you who haven't registered yourself for the uh, 23rd of August for the Mobile Builders, I encourage you to, because as you see, these people here. If you want to know about system living, you're going to talk aside, right? You want to know about developments of a complex called a cool. And you want to know about uh, Airbnb guy. So, to bring the, a whole lot of world of knowledge to one place for two days. And all you need to do is just attend the classes, attend the uh, events. And so you know who you will be able to associate with. You just don't. Because people you don't do nothing, right? It's not how you do it, but one of the speakers is how you do it. So, we have to do a lot of events, and we have to do a lot of events, and we have to do a lot of events. Just because I can pick up one thing for the events. And that is what we want to do a lot of events. So, I highly recommend that you want to do a lot of events, but it's because a lot of good people are there. Don't know if you teach a woman here, so you will talk to a millionaire, this is the people. Let's see, you have a person and you have a million dollars. And the assets, you have a car and a soft cash flow, you have a lot of assets, you have a lot of cash flow, you have a lot of cash flow. And then, you have a lot of cash flow, you have a lot of cash flow, you have a lot of cash flow, you have a lot of cash flow. Thì từ từ nhớ đi, cho nhìn nhận luôn chị, chị nhớ đi hai trong tầng lọ, right? Thì nhìn nhận tôi mỏng lươi, chị tức toàn chuyện nhận trong lúc của nhìn tôi là tí một tòa thế, right? Thì biết chị nhìn nhiều rô sĩ, chị biết nhìn nút cỏ đi, right? Yeah, because rô sĩ là cái bất cứ hôn công hành nào. Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi và hãy subscribe cho kênh Rô sĩ Tây 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 Land marketing. Yeah. For those of you to talk about with your site, you know what you know, Facebook now I do a lot of land selling. I buy 60 acres, 100 acres, 200 acres, I start dividing into 20 acres and I sell it. Yeah. And that I should have talked about so equal acres, you know, to Oklahoma, go to land in Oklahoma, Tasha. You know, Oklahoma, equal acres, I start dividing into five acres a piece. I bought it for, yeah, I have a account for $200,000. With that 20 acres, with that 20 lakhs, sell it for $35,000. You know how much it is? It was $700,000. And then minus all the expenses, you're probably making about $400,000 profit on it. 
grant you the bond of the Pantanal. I could guarantee you, you don't need a hammer for that. No, right? no hammers? <laughs> no hammers. Uh, All you need is just a gun. I don't draw case. You don't go to the petition. I can't give you this thing. I don't draw case. Right? What I did. I don't draw case. 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 You saw raw land. It's a freaking land. That's a, that's a good chunk of money. It's out there too. You don't waste. You don't speak. 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 And then you put a roll in there about what, what twenty five thousand dollars, and then you sell them all. Do you get to name the road? <laughs> yeah, I I don't maintain the road, but I made the road. Oh, no, no, I say, do you get to name the? You want to name the road? Yeah, I want to name the road. Michael, yeah, yeah, I want to put some kind of thing in the road, yeah, Michael. <laughs> All right, so see, if you guys want to learn that too, Michael's here. Michael's built a wealth of knowledge through 30 plus years. Uh, and so if you guys want to come and meet him too, he's going to be his guest speaker over there uh, uh, to share all the knowledge that he has. He's going to hang out with us. He's going to eat lunch with us, eat dinner with us on uh, both days, right? So if you guys are interested, uh, come talk to Michael. Right, thank you. And I come here for the beer. All right, thank you, Michael. <laughs> Give a round of applause. Yeah, so that's just one speaker, right? And uh, yeah, really, all the speakers and trainers that are coming are just my, the, like they're people that made a big difference in my life. They're mentors and peers of mine. Uh, Michael's one, right? Michael and his wife will be there. Um, anyone know uh, Sang So? He owns radio station here. Uh, Chai, Chai Song, who knows Chai Song? Alright. Yeah, right? He's a big uh, Airbnb guy in Florida. Uh, he's flying all the way over here, you know, just to to uh, share uh, his knowledge with us. Um, he's all, he's going to be talking about how, why is it important to become a multi-millionaire, or mo at least a millionaire, right? It's very important that all of us become uh, millionaires. And he's going to be sharing that knowledge, how he's able to do it. Anyone know this guy, Yang, Yang? Left, um, right hand. Who knows Yen Yen? Yen Yen. I always feel like I said his name wrong. He owns Yummy's Cookies. So they've done millions of dollars per year just selling cookies. And I'm like, bro, how, how do you do that? So it's gonna be there to teach you guys how to start a business, structure it correctly, so that you could be a multi-million dollar uh, business as well, right? If you're gonna run business or you do real estate, you need to make sure that your structure is correct, right? So if you don't know where to start, well, he's gonna be there to do a two hour training on how to really start your business correctly. Cause he just done it with his yummy treats. I told him, it's like, there's so many cookies out there and how's he able to still do it? Well, he did it, right? So he's gonna be there to share that with you guys. Uh, if you're interested in running a business. Real estate's a business on its own as well. Uh, anybody know this guy? Sai Paul. Sai Paul. He used to be, uh, he's, a, uh, he's actually an artist. Yeah, so he does paintings and stuff like that. Uh, and then he's a teacher. Uh, and then he became a state rep here in Minnesota. And then he ran his assisted living facility starting with just a single family home. And now he sold his uh, 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 a big assisted living here, but he's built 170 units uh, in uh, Florida. So each bed, they make about at least minimum two grand of profit per bed. So you could take $2,000 and multiply by 170, and you guys will get his number. So assisted living, he's gonna be there to do a two hour training on assisted living, if you guys are interested. Anyone interested in assisted living? Okay, a few of you guys. He is also going to spend a week up here and he's going to do a one-on-one -on -one assisted living training for you guys that already know you're interested and wants to do it. It's gonna be a full day with you and your spouse. Uh, he says six hours, but I guarantee you it's gonna be the full day. All the money, yes, that one costs a little bit. It's 1500 for that course by itself. Then you spend a full day with you to get your assisted living facility started. All that money would donate all that money because he wants to go build some uh, schools and uh, homes in Laos for big uh, Hmong people right? that, that need support there. Uh, that's only for five slots. Unfortunately, four people bought it already. 
So we only have one slot left. So if you guys are interested and serious about assisted living, purchase that ticket tonight because we only have one slot left. And I have not promoted that yet. And so this is the, this has been the only promotion and he took up the slot. I told him we should do more slots, but you know, he needs his time too. Is that for couples or one? That's for couples. Okay. Yeah. So just one ticket for you and your couple. Uh, spend one full day with you to see what your business plan is, what you're doing. If you already have a building, they'll walk the building with you, whatever it is that you need, because each couple is different, you know? Uh, so we only have one slot left if you guys are interested in that. And we're donating all of that money to, to help the people at the block, because he's building some stuff there. So he doesn't need the money, he's just doing it because we, he, we, we want to help some people over there. Uh, then you guys know Ku, Van? Wow, you guys need. He used to have a Facebook page, but too many people messaged him, so he had to delete his Facebook page. So I'm sorry. So he doesn't have a way for you guys to contact him anymore. So you have to go to the conference if you want to hang out with him, meet with him. Yes, they done. Uh, he's one of the partners with uh, Michael uh, to do the 60 units built there, but he's done so many other developments. He's uh, the biggest home developer probably in the world now, right? Uh, the latest project that they got awarded was the HAMS project uh, by Mina Haha and Peng over there. Uh, that's a 300 million plus dollar project. And so that's probably got a groundbreaking two years here. Uh, and I hope that Dr. Peter Monk can participate in that too. There's a bunch of projects. Uh, I'm gonna try to update that because uh, I want our mall community to own some of the stuff that's over there as well. But see, that's just one project, $300 million project. Who's gonna be our keynote speaker at our first dinner at Unison? Um, so he'll talk there for an hour and a half. He'll hang out with us to have dinner with us. So if you guys wanna meet Cool and talk to him, um, that's, that's your chance, right, to come and meet with him. So I, I hope you guys come. Anyone ready to go? our conference? I know someone bought a ticket earlier already. I don't know who, who, who bought a, the ticket earlier? Somebody used a code earlier, maybe they left. Right. Uh, we still have more, so there's more speakers and trainers. Anyone know this guy? Who's that guy? You guys know that guy? Wow, he needs to come out more then. He needs to have more concerts. Thanks, man. Uh, singer Destiny, right? Destiny, yeah. So if you guys don't know, uh, he actually don't make money singing. It's just a hobby that he has. I mean, they make some, but it's not the main thing. So he actually make, uh, his main thing is actually financial services. Uh, he owns the Next Vision, a financial services company. They have over 200 agents throughout the US. I think they're probably gonna expand to a couple of other countries. And so he's gonna be there to talk to us and teach us and do training with us how to structure ourselves properly and how to find financing for our businesses and our real estate investing, right? So if you wanna be a singer and you want to learn how to find money, you need to be there to talk to Case, right? So he's gonna do actual training. Uh, anyone know this guy here? Tutor, tutor. Raise your hand. All right, these are the drunks. <laughs> okay. Tuja owns uh, uh, Unison with his family over there. Uh, Unison Banquet Hall. Uh, and so um, that, that was just a joke. But he's been uh, a great mentor of ours too. My family and his family, we, they, we, there's a lot of different uh, connections there. But he's gonna be there because he's talking, he's gonna be sharing how to run your business with your family. Because he's the youngest, and there's eight of them, and my sister-in-law, my brother in there, or, you know, my sister-in-law's his sister. My brother is his brother-in-law. And I know that they are very difficult to deal with. And so how is he able to manage all his siblings, being the youngest, and manage all the different projects that they have? Unison, including all the small properties. They started real estate as well. You know, by single duplex, fourplexes. Then they moved to larger projects like Unison and, and a bunch of other things that they do too. So they have an investment firm that they all, uh, you know, pool their funding together and resources. And he has to manage all of them, right? 
So people said, don't do, don't do business with your family. Well, I guess you never heard that. But so he's going to be there how to really, if you're able to do it with your family, you can leverage all the resource, all the resources and all the um, information that you guys have um, and the expertise that you have as a family to really scale your business. And that's how they're able to do it. So if you guys want to learn how to uh, do business with your family or invest with your family, Tudor will be there to share that and how he's able to do that all these years. I think it's been like close to 30 years that they've done that. So you'll be there. Um, a couple of these guys are some of my friends too, the younger guys, Fuji, he's done over 100 uh, uh, real estate deals, uh, mostly wholesales. Uh, Steven and uh, New, uh, Steven Good, New, uh, is from North Carolina too. Uh, they, they will share how, it, how you're able to do it with your spouse, right? Like, like, that's very important, like getting your partner on the same page, right? Uh, being able to do that together down there. Um, Shelly Cha, uh, she's one of our uh, uh, investors uh, down in Fresno, and she's kind of been silent. And I told her, no, she needs to come share the mom community. They own about 800 units uh, through the certification model, so she's going to come and share how you're able to purchase properties uh, using the syndication. It just means you pull money together with other investors. Uh, she's the asset manager for their team over there, so she knows her stuff if you want to buy 800 units of property, right? So she's going to be there to do a two-hour training on how to do that. Um, a little bit more advanced, but anybody that has done real estate before, yeah, you need to go in there and take her course. She's really great. Uh, this guy here, Zach Fang, um, he's been a great mentor of mine too, one of my older uh, cousins. Uh, he told me multiple times, over and over in the early 2000s to get into real estate. Uh, I was still young. I thought I already knew what I'm gonna do in my life, and I never listened to this guy. And then he told me again in 2008 when I graduated to go help him and do real estate, and buy those properties for pennies on the dollars, and I did not listen to this guy. <laughs> and so I hope that he's gonna come there and you guys can listen to him, because then he'll show you guys how to do it. And finally I got married, and then I have to listen to him because I got married, right? Uh, so thank you for my wife. For, for doing that. But if I wanted to listen to him back then, but who knows? So come there, he's gonna be our, one of our speakers there too. He's currently in Cancun now, down there right now. Uh, he's just sent me a video, which I will post. If you guys do any projects with him, if you guys come to the conference and you do three deals with him, which he's gonna show you how to do, right? Do three deals with him, he'll fly you guys down to Cancun to hang out, hang out with him down there. So that's the, he just sent me that video uh, as an offer to you guys, all right? Uh, then lastly, uh, well not lastly, well myself and my wife will be there, oh, well. And I will do uh, actually a three and a half hour training on real estate investing. And so it'll be through the Burr Method, all the stuff that I learned throughout this process with Hong Kong and yeah, all the peers, all the mentors that I have, I'm gonna put all of that to a three and a half hour training on real estate investing, and I'll be doing that training. So if you don't know any real estate at all, come and take my training, three and a half hours long, all right? And then lastly here, Kia, Natalie, Yang. Anyone know Kia? Yeah, a few of you guys too, yeah. So she owns two Chick-fil-A franchises. She's actually the one that really encouraged my wife and I to put this conference together to give back to our community. Because um, she knows, so if you have a business right now, right? She's gonna show you how to scale that business. Because only two franchises, you, you guys know Chick-fil-A, right? You guys know Chick-fil-A? Right, you got it? Okay. It's super, 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 super hard to get a Chick-fil-A franchise. Yeah. It costs $10,000, but it's almost impossible to get it. Trust me, I researched it. <laughs> it's really hard to get to a Chick-fil-A franchise. It's harder to get into a Chick-fil-A franchise than to Harvard. I think they call it a CIA. It's harder to get into Chick-fil-A than to get to the CIA, right? <laughs> and she has two of them. So she must know something, and she must have done something right. She managed over 200 employees. Uh, she's hanging out all over the world, but her business is still running, right? And so if you have a business, you need to be able to scale. They're doing like $20 million a year, right? 
So you have to be able to scale your business and she's gonna be there to really show us how to do that, right? So we have all kinds of stuff there. I'll do beginning stuff, we have games gonna teach you guys how to start a business, but we also have the really big people that has done it, like Kia and uh, Sai and Michael and Ku um, um, uh, cool JB, right? They're gonna be there to also share with you guys too, all right? So these are all the people that I'm gonna bring there to the conference. I know for sure we're not doing it next year, right? Then the following year, I don't know if we will do it again. Uh, maybe, I'll see how it goes. Um, but even if we do it, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the same caliber of people that's gonna be there. All right, so this is kind of like the only chance you guys have. I spent all six, seven years by like, really networking with all these individuals. They've been super helpful to me. I know them personally, and so that's why I bring them. I know that if you guys go, if you just meet one of these people, or at least listen to Zach, or listen to Natalie, or one of these, if you just go and listen to one of them, or just go and hang out with Michael, I know it's already worth the money that you guys are gonna pay for, it. all right? So this, I'm sorry, I'm taking the paper. So we, we gave you guys a paper, come in. This is half sheet right here, all right? So if you guys found like today's training at least worth it, we go to, I mean the conference will be, uh, you know, like, I mean there's so many other trainers at the conference, all right? Uh, Hong Kong's gonna be there too, for, at least for dinner. Yeah, so he'll be there. He'll be there to hang out with us. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested, we gave you guys the paper. Uh, just choose on top of there the VIP pass. I recommend do the VIP. The VIP pass, you guys get to go on the boat. The difference in price is very minimal, so just do the VIP pass. Uh, it's Thursday and Fridays. If you guys do have work, uh, honestly, I recommend go ask for those two days off to meet the individuals that we brought on, on here, okay? Um, so you could do the VIP, regular price is $5.97, but today's price uh, with the 40% off is uh, five three fifty nine. So that's over 230 bucks off, uh, just for the people for today. So the code is only for today. If you guys are interested, uh, fill the paper out. I have my two staff there, my wife and mom. Right, raise your hand. And they could take the paper, they could do it. They could sign up right now, or if you guys have questions, they can answer. I can answer any questions that you guys have too, all right? So who's ready to fill this out? Anyone filled it out already? My you coming? Oh yeah, if you do on there, just use the code uh, PARTNERS40 uh, and then you'll get 40, you'll, you'll get the percentage off. So you can just use your, you just go to our website, monwellbuilders.com backslash conference, use code PARTNERS40 and then you guys will get that 40% off. Again, that code is only for today. So if you have family and friends that you think they should buy, you can text that to them, but uh, it's really meant for you guys. All right? With that, um, I also gave you guys another paper here. So I, this is for networking games. If you guys, uh, tonight, uh, we're about to be done here. So we're gonna go out, uh, have a beer, network, talk, sing. Uh, if you guys wanna stay, uh, talk to Hong Kong, uh, talk to Michael. Uh, you see a couple of the older folks that are in the room. They're the ones that can give you money to rebuild your homes. So go talk to them. Uh, a couple of the guys in the back. <laughs> Um, and so if you guys feel at least uh, 15 of them out, like to me, I was able to build what we had because I went out to all of these seminars and conferences and network and get to know people, so I really want you guys to network. So as a reward, if you guys get at least 15 people, uh, we'll give you guys a virtual pass for free. If you guys, the first person to get all 30 people, we'll give you guys a VIP pass, okay? Uh, for tonight, so just get that done tonight, or you guys purchase your ticket, um, and we'll go with that. Any questions? You guys ready? I know that you, a few of you guys purchased your ticket. If I get 30, can I get a refund? What is it? <laughs> yeah, we'll give you a refund. A refund. Um, questions or comments? Any questions you guys have? Is today, is the training at least worth it tonight? Yeah, yeah. Uh, worth it? All right. Actually, I, I have a few questions for Hong Kong. Hong Kong. 
Do you take clients? <laughs> we take clients for a uh, to new construction. I haven't thought about it. Go ahead. I thought I thought you did some bills for some clients that. Oh, oh yeah. yes, yes, yes. I do take clients for uh, for new bills. I thought it was more like a mentorship. Program. Oh no no not mentorship. <laughs> We got we got to get Hong Kong to do a mentorship. Who, who would want Hong Kong to do a mentorship? All right, there's a lot of people interested. We'll think about that. That might be part of our platform. Uh, as part of our platform, as we build it, I want uh, people in Hong Kong uh, and other uh, uh, experts to come and do actual trainings and stuff like that, like a series, you know, like 12 hours, 18 hours, six hours. So we might have something like that in the future. If you guys really want it, let us know, right? Yeah. Um, I think I'm done. To me, if I'm gonna do new construction, I think I would rather do it with someone that has done it before. So if if anyone wants to do new construction, uh, what would your recommendation be? And would you do a partnership split with people? Yeah, it, it, it goes back to uh, trust too. I mean, if you have a lot of trust in that person, then it doesn't hurt because. I mean, I think, I think when you start new, you find it harder to trust people because you have a lot to lose. But when you grow, you have to learn how to build that trust, you know, with your partners, with your peers. So, I mean, if you have to partner up with somebody that you trust, I think it's the best way to go. All right, any questions you guys have? How, yeah. How old are you? He's 16. Oh, I'm 36. Yeah, I feel old. That was right. The 16, 16, that's pretty close. Alright, right, with that, we all still gonna be here uh, to hang out. You guys got your blue ticket, right? And then, um, you know, just go out there, go to a bartender, come back and forth here. Uh, I'll still be here to hang out. Uh, again, uh, I want you guys to go network, so if you guys will network, get to know people, you can write their information on the paper. If you guys are ready to sign up tonight, you know, uh, I have uh, my two staff are there, so you guys can go and talk to them. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Oh wait, wait, wait. Actually, actually, sorry. You can come back. Let's take a picture. Yeah. Also, if you don't want your beer, I'll take your ticket for a drawing. But.